Fibrinogen, Wikipedia Audio Fibrinogen is a glycoprotein that in vertebrates circulates in the blood. During tissue and vascular injury it is converted enzymatically by thrombin to fibrin and subsequently to a fibrin-based blood clot. Fibrinogen functions primarily to occlude blood vessels and thereby stop excessive bleeding. However, fibrinogen's product, fibrin, binds and reduces the activity of thrombin. This activity, sometimes referred to as antithrombin I, serves to limit blood clotting. Loss or reduction in this antithrombin I activity due to mutations in fibrinogen genes or hypofibrinogen conditions can lead to excessive blood clotting and thrombosis. Fibrin also mediates blood platelet and endothelial cell spreading, tissue fibroblast proliferation, capillary tube formation and angiogenesis and thereby functions to promote tissue revascularization, wound healing, and tissue repair. Reduced and slash or dysfunctional fibrinogens occur in various congenital and acquired human fibrinogen-related disorders. These disorders represent a clinically important group of rare conditions in which individuals may present with severe episodes of pathological bleeding and thrombosis. These conditions are treated by supplementing blood fibrinogen levels and inhibiting blood clotting, respectively. Certain of these disorders may also be the cause of liver and kidney diseases. Fibrinogen is a positive acute phase protein i.e. its blood levels rise in response to systemic inflammation, tissue injury, and certain other events. It is also elevated in various cancers. Elevated levels of fibrinogen in inflammation as well as cancer and other conditions have been suggested to be the cause of thrombosis and vascular injury that accompanies these conditions. Genes Fibrinogen is made and secreted into the blood primarily by liver hepatocyte cells. Endothelium cells are also reported to make what appears to be small amounts of fibrinogen but this fibrinogen has not been fully characterized, blood platelets and their precursors, bone marrow megakaryocytes, while once thought to make fibrinogen, are now known to take up and store but not make the glycoprotein. The final secreted, hepatocyte-derived glycoprotein is composed of two trimers with each trimer composed of three different polypeptide chains, the fibrinogen alpha chain encoded by the FGA gene, the fibrinogen beta chain encoded by the FGB gene, and the fibrinogen gamma chain encoded by the FGG gene. All three genes are located on the long or P-arm of human chromosome 4. Alternate splicing of the FGA gene produces a minor expanded isoform of A-alpha termed A-alpha E which replaces A-alpha in 1-3% of circulating fibrinogen. Alternate splicing of FGG produces a minor isoform of gamma termed gamma which replaces gamma in 8-10% of circulating fibrinogen. FGA is not alternatively spliced. Hence, the final fibrinogen product is composed principally of A-alpha, B-beta, and gamma chains with a small percentage of it containing A-alpha E and slash or gamma chains in place of A-alpha and slash or gamma chains, respectively. The three genes are transcribed and translated in coordination by a mechanism which remains incompletely understood. The coordinated transcription of these three fibrinogen genes is rapidly and greatly increased by systemic conditions such as inflammation and tissue injury. Cytokines produced during these systemic conditions, such as interleukin-6 and interleukin-1-beta, appear responsible for upregulating this transcription. The A-alpha B-beta and gamma chains are transcribed and translated coordinately on the endoplasmic reticulum with their peptide chains being passed into the ER while their signal peptide portions are removed. Inside the ER, 
the three chains are assembled initially into A alpha gamma and B beta gamma dimers, then to ab trimers, and finally to two hexamers, i.e. two ab trimers joined together by numerous disulfide bonds. The hexamer is transferred to the Golgi where it is glycosylated, hydroxylated, sulfated, and phosphorylated to form the mature fibrinogen glycoprotein that is secreted into the blood. Mature fibrinogen is arranged as a long flexible protein array of three nodules held together by a very thin thread which is estimated to have a diameter between 8 and 15 angstrom. The two end nodules are alike in consisting of B-beta and gamma chains while the center slightly smaller nodule consists of two intertwined A-alpha-alpha alpha chains. Measurements of shadow lengths indicate that nodule diameters are in the range 50 to 70 A. The length of the dried molecule is 475 plus or minus 25 A. Blood clotting is measured using standard tests e.g. prothrombin time, partial thromboplastin time, thrombin time, and slash or reptilase time, low fibrinogen levels and dysfunctional fibrinogens usually prolong these times whereas the lack of fibrinogen renders these times infinitely prolonged, antigenic levels of fibrinogen levels are measured in the plasma isolated from venous blood by immunoassays with normal levels being about 1.5 to 3 gram slash liter, depending on the method used. These levels are normal in dysfibrinogenemia, decreased in hypofibrinogenemia and hip dysfibrinogenemia, and absent in afibrinogenema. Functional levels of fibrinogen are measured on plasma induced to clot. The levels of clotted fibrinogen in this test should be decreased in hypofibrinogenemia, hypodysfibrinogenemia, and dysfibrinogenemia and undetectable in afibrinogenemia. Functional fibrinogen slash antigenic fibrinogen levels are 0.7 in hypofibrinogenemia, hypodzifibrinogenemia, and dysfibringognemia and not applicable in afibrinogenemia. Fibrinogen analysis can also be tested on whole blood samples by thromboelastometry. This analysis investigates the interaction of coagulation factors, their inhibitors, anticoagulant drugs, blood cells, specifically platelets, during clotting, and subsequent fibrinolysis as it occurs in whole blood. The test provides information on hemostatic efficacy and maximum clot firmness to give additional information on fibrin platelet interactions and the rate of fibrinolysis. Scanning electron microscopy and confocal laser scanning microscopy of in vitro formed clots can give information on fibrin clot density and architecture. The fibrinogen uptake test or fibrinogen skin was formerly used to detect deep vein thrombosis. In this method, radioactively labeled fibrinogen, typically with radioiodine, is given to individuals incorporated into a thrombus, and detected by scintigraphy. The fibrinogen molecule circulates as a soluble plasma glycoprotein with a typical molecular weight of 340 kata. It has a rod-like shape with dimensions of 9 times 47.5 times 6 nm and has a negative net charge at physiological pH. The normal concentration of fibrinogen in blood plasma is 150-400 mg dl with levels appreciably below or above this range associated with pathological bleeding and slash or thrombosis. Fibrinogen has a circulating half-life of 4 days. During blood clotting, thrombin attacks the N-terminus of the A-alpha and B-beta chains in fibrinogen to form individual fibrin strands plus two small polypeptides, fibrinopeptides A and B derived from these respective chains. The individual fibrin strands then polymerize and are cross-linked with other fibrin stands by blood factor XIIIA to form an extensive interconnected fibrin network that is the basis for the formation of a mature fibrin clot. In addition to forming fibrin, 
fibrinogen also promotes blood clotting by forming bridges between, and activating, blood platelets through binding to their gbib 3a surface membrane fibrinogen receptor. Fibrin participates in limiting blood clot formation and lysing formed blood clots by at least two important mechanisms. First, it possesses three low affinity binding sites for thrombin, this binding sequesters thrombin from attacking fibrinogen. Second, fibrin's A alpha chain accelerates by at least 100 fold the amount of plasmin activated by tissue plasminogen activator. Plasmin breaks down blood clots. Plasmin's attack on fibrin releases D dimers. The detection of these dimers in blood is used as a clinical test for fibrinolysis. Several disorders in the quantity and slash or quality of fibrinogen cause pathological bleeding, pathological blood clotting, and slash or the deposition of fibrinogen in the liver, kidneys, and other tissues. The following list of these disorders briefly describes and compares them and gives linkages to main article Wikipedia pages that offer more complete descriptions. Congenital A fibrinogenemia is a rare and generally autosomal recessive inherited disorder in which blood does not clot due to a lack of fibrinogen. Congenital hypofibrinogenemia is a rare inherited disorder in which blood may not clot normally due to reduced levels of fibrinogen. The disorder reflects a disruptive mutation in only one of the two parental FGA, FGB, or FBG genes and has a low degree of genetic penetrance, i.e. only some family members with the defective gene ever exhibit symptoms. Symptoms of the disorder which more often occurs in individuals with lower plasma fibrinogen levels include episodic bleeding and thrombosis that typically begin in late childhood or adulthood. Fibrinogen storage disease is an extremely rare disorder. It is a form of congenital hypofibrinogenemia in which certain specific hereditary mutations in one copy of the FGG gene causes its fibrinogen product to accumulate in and damage, liver cells. The disorder has not reported with FGA or FGB mutations. Symptoms of these FGG mutations have a low level of penetrance. The plasma fibrinogen levels detected in this disorder reflect the fibrinogen made by the normal gene. Fibrinogen storage disease may lead to abnormal bleeding and thrombosis but is distinguished by also sometimes leading to liver cirrhosis. Structure Congenital dysfibrinogenemia is a rare autosomal dominant inherited disorder in which plasma fibrinogen is composed of a dysfunctional fibrinogen made by a mutated FGA, FGB, or FBG gene inherited from one parent plus a normal fibrinogen made by a normal gene inherited from the other parent. As a reflection of this duality, Plasma fibrinogen levels measured by immunological methods are normal but are C50% lower when measured by clot formation methods. The disorder exhibits reduced penetrance with only some individuals with the abnormal gene showing symptoms of abnormal bleeding and thrombosis. Hereditary fibrinogen A alpha chain amyloidosis is an autosomal dominant extremely rare inherited disorder caused by a mutation in one of the two copies of the FGA gene. It is a form of congenital dysfibrinogenemia in which certain mutations lead to the production of an abnormal fibrinogen that circulates in the blood while gradually accumulating in the kidney. This accumulation leads over time to one form of familial renal amyloidosis. Plasma fibrinogen levels are similar to that seen in other forms of congenital dysfibrinogenemia. Fibrinogen A alpha chain amyloidosis has not associated with abnormal bleeding or thrombosis. Acquired dysfibrinogenemia is a rare disorder in which circulating fibrinogen is composed at least in part of a dysfunctional fibrinogen due to various acquired diseases. 
One well-studied cause of the disorder is severe liver disease including hepatoma, chronic active hepatitis, cirrhosis, and jaundice due to biliary tract obstruction. The diseased liver synthesizes a fibrinogen which has a normally functional amino acid sequence but is incorrectly glycosylated added to it during its passage through the Golgi. The incorrectly glycosylate fibrinogen is dysfunctional and may cause pathological episodes of bleeding and slash or blood clotting. Other, less well understood, causes are plasma cell dyscrasias and autoimmune disorders in which a circulating abnormal immunoglobulin or other protein interferes with fibrinogen function, and rare cases of cancer and medication toxicities. Congenital hypodysfibrinogenemia is a rare inherited disorder in which low levels of immunologically detected plasma fibrinogen are and composed at least in part of a dysfunctional fibrinogen. The disorder reflects mutations typically in both inherited fibrinogen genes one of which produces a dysfunctional fibrinogen while the other produces low amounts of fibrinogen. The disorder while having reduced penetrance is usually more severe than congenital dysfibrinogenemia but like the latter disorder causes pathological episodes of bleeding and slash or blood clotting. Cryofibrinogenemia is an acquired disorder in which fibrinogen precipitates at cold temperatures and may lead to the intravascular precipitation of fibrinogen, fibrin, and other circulating proteins thereby causing the infarction of various tissues and bodily extremities. Cryoglobulonemia may occur without evidence of an underlying associated disorders, i.e. primary cryoglobulemia or far more commonly, with evidence of an underlying disease, i.e. secondary cryoglobulonemia. Secondary cryofibrinonemia can develop in individuals suffering infection, malignant or premalignant disorders, vasculitis, and autoimmune diseases. In these cases, Cryofibinogenema may or may not cause tissue injury and slash or other symptoms and the actual cause-effect relationship between these diseases and the development of cryofibrinogenemia is unclear. Cryofibrinogenemia can also occur in association with the intake of certain drugs. Acquired hypofibrinogenemia is a deficiency in circulating fibrinogen due to excessive consumption that may occur as a result of trauma, certain phases of disseminated intravascular coagulation, and sepsis. It may also occur as a result of hemodilution as a result of blood losses and slash or transfusions with packed red blood cells or other fibrinogen poor whole blood replacements. Clinical analyses of the fibrinogen disorders typically measure blood clotting using the following successive steps, higher levels are, amongst others, associated with cardiovascular disease. It may be elevated in any form of inflammation, as it is an acute phase protein, for example, it is especially apparent in human gingival tissue during the initial phase of periodontal disease. Blood clot formation Fibrinogen disorders Levels of functionally normal fibrinogen increase in pregnancy to an average of 4.5 gram slash litter compared to an average of 3 g slash L in non-pregnant people. They may also increase in various forms of cancer, particularly gastric, lung, prostate, and ovarian cancers. In these cases, the hyperfibrinogenemia may contribute to the development of pathological thrombosis. A particular pattern of migratory superficial vein thrombosis, termed Trousseau syndrome, occurs in, and may precede all other signs and symptoms of, these cancers. Hyperfibrinogenemia has also been linked as a cause of persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn and post-operative thrombosis. 
high fibrinogen levels had been proposed as a predictor of hemorrhagic complications during catheter-directed thrombolysis for acute or subacute peripheral native artery and arterial bypass occlusions. However, a systematic review of the available literature until January 2016 found that the predictive value of plasma fibrinogen level for predicting hemorrhagic complications after catheter-directed thrombolysis is unproven. Congenital afibrinogenemia Congenital hypofibrinogenemia Fibrinogen storage disease Congenital dysfibrinogenemia Hereditary fibrinogen A-alpha chain amyloidosis Acquired dysfibrinogenemia Congenital hypodysfibrinogenemia Cryofibrinogenemia Acquired hypofibrinogenemia Laboratory tests Hyperfibrinogenemia